Okay, we're here to talk the, about bass for the Mach A kit. And what I plan on doing is having it on a cobbled stone path. Now, to do that, I need cobblestones. I want to use this wood base. These were four for three dollars at my big box hobby shop. They're just going to require a little bit of finishing, just a little bit of sanding, and you can varnish it. I want to cover the top of this thing with cobblestones. I found this at um, Hobby Lobby, my local big box place. It was on clearance for 64 cents. And if you look at the shoe, that's, per <coughs> that's perfect size for the shoe. Here, let's give you guys a better look, a little closer look. Okay, that's perfect size for what I'm trying to do. So I want to cover this whole base with these things. Now this is a exactly the pattern I want on there. I want the stones raised up with gaps in between. So I can't use this as my mold. I'm going to have to make a mold off this. Now to make that mold, I'm going to use a molding compound. That molding compound is called Oya Maru. I'm looking for it right now. I should have gotten it out before I started this. The molding compound is called Oya Maru. It is uh, moldable by heat. Let me pause the camera. I'll be back in a second so that I can get it and show it to you. Wouldn't you know it? I found it immediately when I paused the camera. Immediately. Here's the Oya Maru. It's silicon. You heat it up with boiling water. You make your impression in it. Put it in the freezer and it cures. And then you can cast a mold with resin, with plaster, with that, whatever you want. The stuff is reusable, unlike making a silicon rubber mold. And this kind of is a silicon rubber to begin with. So I want to make a mold to make a mold with, to make my castings with. So I'm going to take it downstairs and I'm going to give it the Oya Maru treatment. Okay. This is more like a rubber stamp right now. But I would like to have my base covered with that. So I'm going to go make a mold off of it. I don't even know where this was in Hobby Lobby because I walk around Hobby Lobby all the time looking for stuff like this and I found it in the clearance area so I couldn't tell you what part of it the store it was in it looks like it'd be in the molding area where you mold jewelry and stuff but I never saw anything like it there okay so there you go well I'm gonna go get started on this I'll be back in a little bit and like I said you can see that is perfect scale with that and the Mach A kit is 120th scale so that's perfect for 120th scale. I'm sure it'd work on 124th scale. Most car kits are 124th scale. So, yeah, I bet that would work just fine with a car kit. It might be a little oversized. Well, anyhow, I will be back to show you the end result and what it looks like. All right, everyone. There is the pattern I wanted to make. And here's the Oya Maru. Okay, now I took a can of corn and smashed it flat with a can of corn so this would sit somewhat level. When you're pouring plaster, you want it to be somewhat level. This corner didn't do very well. It was near the edge of the corn or something happened to it. So I may redo this tomorrow. That's one of the good things. If I don't like the end result, I heat that up and do it again. Tomorrow I'm going to get the plaster out and try to make a mold of this and see what I get. If I like it, great. If I don't, well, great. We just try again. That's the fun part about this. I'm not wasting my molding compound. I can heat it up and try it over. So tomorrow you get to see how it comes out. Well, here's the first try at making a plaster cast. <clears throat> I realize one of my troubles is going to be keeping the thickness uniform on this thing because there's no level marker. So I'm going to have a little bit of trouble with that. The other problem is this plaster, the directions say, give it a half hour. It sets up in 30 minutes. No, it's more like three hours. Of course, the thinner it is, the longer it takes to cure. That's true with resin as well. 
and it's still really wet to the touch and it's not going to be cured until it's dry to the touch and i got a nice little um <laughs> spoon left over but what's more important is let's zoom in and see what this looks like okay i found the camera's fast zoom button that's going to make zooming a lot more reasonable now i've got the aluminum foil behind it because i didn't want to if i spilled any of the plaster i didn't want it on the tabletop it does clean up real easily it's just it's easier to throw away a sheet of foil than it is to clean up plaster off your table a little bit better of a zoom there we're a full zoom right there and it's going to look exactly the way i want it to so if I can figure out how to deal with the thickness issue, and I think just a little bit of sanding on some sandpaper will work. I'm just going to have to be careful not to break it because it's so thin. I'll be able to get the tiles all the way I want them with all the orientation. There is a little bit of a non... It didn't mold correctly there. But if that's only for this one where there was an air bubble, that's fine because real life has imperfections and replicating imperfections around won't make me sad at all as a trial run i like it i'm good with it we're going to let it cure up overnight and see just what it's like in the morning but it's going to make a good good tile pattern for my base and if i get my base out here we can put it up on my base although i won't leave it there I would need two and a half more of these to fill the base. Okay. So I do like how that's coming out. It looks like to be in scale with 1 20th to me. I could take a ruler and measure it and figure it out, to be honest with you. That wouldn't take much, but to me that just feels like I'm being a little uptight and anal. Okay. But for those of you that want to know, these bricks are about it looks like six millimeters maybe seven millimeters long oh we're off camera we can do it here though each brick looks to be about seven millimeters long if that's 120th scale seven times 20 is 280 millimeters or 28 centimeters so if i go down and measure a brick and find out it's about 28 centimeters this is perfect I'll come back and let you know because I got a brick in the garage. Be back in a little bit. Okay, I did my measurements. I have a paving stone which was 22 centimeters long. And I have a brick which was 20 centimeters. So the paving stone and the brick are about the same size. So it's roughly 130th scale if we're on a real brick. Now, my Ma K kit is 124th scale okay 120th scale it doesn't look off to me so I'm not gonna worry about it but this is more car scale so if I wanted to do a tile floor underneath a car I could do this and it would wouldn't even look wrong or funny so let me see if I can find a car model part real fast put it on there and see how it looks yeah I got one right here let's hope I don't destroy the whole world getting it out sorry I'm not prepared for this because I'm thinking as I'm going you see and that's part of it this is one of the shelf queen cars but if you look at that <laughs> it, it would look just fine so if I can figure out how to make a big mold of this thing which I think I've just figured out how to do. I could use it to make garage floors for car models. So there you go. I had a Hobby Lobby find for basically 69 cents, which I can use to make bases for car models with, or other models that are all about similar scale. And if you're wondering how the oil is coming on the foot, there you go. We're going to talk about this. This is baking for a little bit longer. In other words, oil paints won't be cured for three or four more days. So I'm not going to mess with it too much for the next little bit. We'll get to see the results soon enough. All right, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this. 
in the magic of video editing overnight became like two seconds for you guys. But anyhow, I'm going to get going. I will be back in a little while. Okay, everyone, working on the base. I spent most of the week making a bunch of these. Okay. If you remember the rubber stamp, here's my Oya Maru. And I made four tiles. Now, let's zoom in a little bit so we can take a look at the tiles. I showed you the first one. I made a bunch of others. Okay. They're good in scale, but we have a problem. I'm not getting a uniform thickness out of them when I cast them. And I'm sure people who first start casting run into this problems with long, flat, thin pieces. This one's really thick compared to this one. And this one is almost perfect. This was the first one. So, I gotta smooth them out and level them out if I wanna coat my wood block with these. Okay? Because the different thickness, this one's way thicker than this one, just isn't gonna work. It's gonna look funny. The basic result is get a piece of sandpaper and sand it. That's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. Or keep casting them until I get a whole bunch of them the right thickness. Plaster is pretty cheap, so it's not really going to kill me to do this seven or eight times. Because these two are almost the exact same thickness right here. These two are the same thickness. So I've got two that are good. This one's close. I could probably fix this one really quick. This one's way too thick. Anyhow, there's the talk about the base. Those are coming out really good. There are some bubble effects in different places on different ones. Like this one here, you can see a bubble effect. Got it right there. Whereas there's no effect on this one at all. Okay. So they're going to make good plates to put down on here as a cobbled path or something that this guy's standing on. I just got to get them uniform thickness, which is going to require some sanding. All right, back in a second. I want to show you the end result of all the oil wash.